What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Living your best life means something different to everyone, especially when it comes to health care. That's why Mercy One offers compassionate, personalized care. We are here for you with one team of experts providing access to the primary care and highly rated specialty care you need easily and conveniently. So go ahead, live your best life. We're with you every step of the way. Mercy One, your best life, our one purpose. In Iowa, we all play by the same rules. Hard work pays off, practice makes perfect, success is something you earn, and teamwork helps us all be winners. The Iowa Pork Producers Association is proud to support statewide high school athletics. Because on our team and on yours, what we bring to the table is what brings us all together. Learn more about our commitment to Iowa at iowapork.org. The Iowa Farm Bureau is proud to present this amazing state tournament and celebrate the accomplishments of Iowa's student athletes. To the Iowa Farm Bureau, this is more than just a sport. It's hometown pride, it's hopes and dreams, it's our future leaders, it's a reason to do more and be more. And it's that farm strong spirit that can only be found in Iowa. Congratulations to the student athletes and coaches on a successful year and remember, Today's successes are just the beginning of tomorrow's achievements. Good afternoon and welcome to Extreme Arena in, Iowa, in Coralville, the home of the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Dar Danielson with you alongside Molly Geis as we get ready for the opening match of the state girls volleyball tournament on the Girls Union Network powered by Mid-American Energy. And we have uh, a couple teams here in 5A who have driven across town to meet up for their third time this season in number two, Ankeny Centennial, number seven, Ankeny. Ankeny Centennial won both these matchups, Molly, but in the last one, Ankeny got out to a 2 0 lead and Centennial came back. So there's always, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe in the third time it's hard to beat somebody, but I do know in rivalries like this, anything can happen. Yeah, you're right. And it, it makes it kind of added fun for both teams that it's such a big rivalry match. Um, and they know each other so well. And so today's just going to be about who adjusts and who learns from, you know, like volleyball, it, it matters how well you're passing, how well you're serving. Those things can change day to day. So, um, you know, the first few times they met it, it can be a completely different game. Let's talk about the road to a state here for these two teams. As uh, here we go, uh, Ankeny, the uh, Region 8 champion, defeating Iowa City Liberty. And you look at... Uh, Ava Willie, Cameron Scheib, a couple of their key players there. The Region 5 champion, Centennial, with 30 and 6 record, uh, defeated Council Bluffs Lincoln. Uh, Delaney Miller, uh, obviously 4.2 kills per set, and Cambria Leisure, 8.5 assists. So they each have a few of the stars. In volleyball, you have a few that kind of stand out, but it's also, as you said, a whole team effort is what you need to win, isn't it? Yeah, and both teams are very well balanced, and I think that that's why they're here at the state tournament. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be fun to see who, who steps up. And, um, you know, I think 
Ankeny Centennial has been one of those teams that everybody's been talking about all year long and how tough they are, and they are super tough. And Ankeny has um, went through a lot of adversity, and they have really started to, since their last match against Ankeny Centennial, um, to develop as a team and, you know, get stronger. So yeah, it'll be fun overcome to some injuries and stuff to yeah. keep players and, and, and really developed and gotten better here as we yeah. go along. Yeah, very good. Let's uh, take a break. We'll do that. We'll be back with more at the Girls' State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Thanks for joining us for the 2023 Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Volleyball Championship. We hope you're enjoying the competitive action on the court, and we are excited to have President Brent Johnson of the Iowa Farm Bureau here to talk to us about the relationship between Iowa Farm Bureau and the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Thanks for joining us, Brent. We want to tell the viewers about Iowa Farm Bureau and the support for the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. So Brent, why does Iowa Farm Bureau invest in both the Iowa Girl and our state tournaments? Yeah, we're, we're absolutely excited to be a part of the volleyball tournament again now. It's been 18 years that we've partnered together and it really allows us to showcase the, the, the hard work, dedication, and, and excellence that all these girls put into their sport and their craft. We couldn't be more proud to, to partner with the Girls Union and, and now in 18 years with the volleyball tournament and really supporting these, these kids, these girls that have worked so hard through the years and the decades, honing their craft and, and playing the sport that they absolutely love. You know, the, the time and dedication that these kids have put into their into their sport is is absolutely phenomenal and we're proud to be a part of part of that sponsorship and part of this collaboration and you know these kids they're not only they're not only good on the courts but they're good in the classrooms too and they're they're amongst our nation's brightest and their best absolutely well thank you so much Brent for joining us absolutely. and thank you Farm Bureau for your support of the Iowa girl back to volleyball State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau and the Girls Union Digital Network powered by Mid-American Energy. We have the 1-5A matchup going on, the Battle of West Des Moines with uh, Ankeny, or West Des Moines Dowling and West and Des Moines Valley. We'll have the Battle of Ankeny here, Ankeny and Ankeny Centennial, and Ankeny kind of set, you know, they set the tone. It was a volleyball town before they had two schools, and, and Centennial's kind of carried that on, but Molly, guys, let's talk a little bit about some of the key names we'll be hearing throughout this match today. Yeah, for Ankeny, um, you know, when I'm looking at who gets the most attempts, their hitting attempts, that kind of stuff, they've got Cameron Scheib. She's an outside hitter. Uh, she's had 868 attempts this year, 287 kills. Um, Reagan Hanfelt, she's their middle. Uh, she's going to get the next most attempts. And then Ava Willie, their other middle, um, is also getting, you know, those are their top three hitters. And so for them, it's going to be key if they have a good passing game, if they can get it to the middle um, and use them. Uh, and then for Ankeny Centennial, um, Delaney Miller, an outside hitter. Jane Pratt is an outside hitter this year. Last year, she was a middle, and she was also a middle as a freshman. Um, so they're heavy on the outsides. Um, clearly, they want to get their middles, you know, involved so that their outsides can produce. Um, but... That's kind of a fun thing to see when, when players move positions going from like a middle hitter to an outside hitter. Um, so Jaden Pratt made that move this year. How big a change is that for? Well, for when you play middle hitter, you're basically getting the perfect set 
because it's off of a perfect pass. So right. you're just going in and swinging. As an outside, you're getting kind of the junk balls, um, <laughs> and it really is. And yeah, so you, you get have up to, in the air, and you got to kind of adjust, don't you? Yeah, because, yeah. like, if it's not a perfect pass, then it's just like a high ball to the outside or to the right side, and so you have to keep it in play, you know, try to get a kill off of it. But So it's learning different shots, learning to be smart. Um, so it, And then you, you pass more, too. So middles typically don't play back row not always but they typically don't and then a lot of outsides will transition to six rotation players and um, pass even sometimes from the front row and that is one thing I'm still in all the years trying to figure out the substitutions <laughs> and the coaches as a coach and you probably know better and you know when you're going to put somebody in where and what slot and we know the libero is, is a defensive player that could come in but is that predetermined who you're going to move in and in what area, or is that the coaches kind of go by the feel of how the match is going? For the most part, you're always putting your libero in for you. Tr like it works best if you can put it for two people that are opposite of each other, which would be two middles or two outsides, or um, most of the time it's for the middles, but not always. Um, and you know, sometimes if you have somebody else struggling, you don't have another next best passer, you might switch them in for somebody else in the back row but it gets a little it, it's it's complicated even the kids sometimes don't understand you're like you'll see coaches like pushing or pulling kids because they don't sub or they do sub because they're going it's very yeah, and confusing. then occasionally we'll see well the referee will stop and go over and say well wait a minute well this was out of rotation and you didn't have yeah you know yeah and that kind of stuff yeah which, um yeah, but the libero makes it a much better game, and it's it's fun because I mean, not that it's always like it's not always the shortest player, it's um, but they're a very good defensive player, and it's made the game better to be able to have good passing. Yeah, um, they went to that, and then the, of course the rally scoring was a big thing that made it yeah much faster, and and you can score on defense and offense both, and yeah, it really makes that's, it a, a yeah. A, a that's much, what makes it such an emotional game is like every mistake scores for the other team. Yeah. Um, and but you you have to be aggressive or you're not going to score. So and mentioning that that's the big thing is not to let them get a string and get a, a long right. string of uh, scoring going, isn't it? Right. I think we're just about ready here to go down to our public address and get our starting lineups going as we're finishing the warm ups. And the teams have come out. You'll see Ankeny be in the maroon on your left and the Centennial on the right side of the court. And we're just about set. Good afternoon, fans, and welcome to today's 2023 Girls State Volleyball quarterfinal matchup featuring the Ankeny Hawkettes. And the Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Fans, at this time, the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and the Iowa Farm Bureau would like to recognize the outstanding sportsmanship and decorum shown by the qualifying schools during the season and state tournament week. In recognition of the importance of good sportsmanship, each state qualifying school was asked to nominate a spectator who represents their school and community in a sportsmanlike manner. Peyton Leibolt from the Student Advisory Council of the IGHSAU will present each nominee with a certificate of recognition and a $250 check payable to their school scholarship fund. Please join us in honoring these individuals whose decorum and respect for others serves as a model for all spectators attending interscholastic events. From Ankeny, Grant Waller. And from Ankeny Centennial, Amy Miller. The Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union promotes good sportsmanship by participants, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants, officials, and spectators in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, sexist, or abusive comments, or intimidating actions directed at officials, participants, coaches, 
team representatives or event personnel will not be tolerated and are grounds for removal. We thank you for your cooperation and invite you to enjoy the game. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players in today's quarterfinal matchup. We'll introduce the non-starters and assistant coaches first for the Ankeny Hawkins. Number three, Reagan Scheib. Number six, Chloe Wiederen. Number seven, Ava Locke. Number eight, Maya Ridgeway. Number nine, Kenneth Roush. Number 12, Marley Ellison. Number 13, Megan Rembert. And number 17, Olivia Ike. The assistant coaches for the Hawkins, Claire Silliman, Michaela Roush, Tyson Landmesser, Taylor Fieneman, Cody Myers, and Parker Lundstrom. Now, let's meet the starters for the Hawkins. A junior, number two, Reagan Hanfelt. A junior, number five, Cameron Scheib. A senior, number 10, Lauren Dockendorf. A senior, number 11, Addie Brecht. A junior, number 14, Lana Coleman. A senior, number 15, Ava Willie. And the libero for the Hawkettes, a junior, number four, Bailey Carlson. The head coach for the Hawkettes, Liz Bethke. Now we'll meet the non-starters and assistant coaches for Ankeny Centennial. Number one, Nora Bacchus. Number three, Brooklyn Conger. Number four, Finley Greiner. Number seven, Tatum Schmidt. Number 10, Emma Lichty. Number 12, Gabby Mixdorf. Number 16, Megan Cheeseman. Number 17, Ava Adams. The assistant coaches, Sarah Alberts, Annie Stasel, Jenna Britt, Brett Rinks, Claire Hill, and Madison Liss. Now let's meet the starters for the Jaguars. A senior, number five, Addie Pollock. A junior, number eight, Jaden Pratt. A senior, number nine, Anna Sash. A senior, number 11, Cambria Leisure. A junior, number 15, Delaney Miller. A senior, number 18, Ava Cronenberg. And the libero for Ankeny Centennial, a sophomore, number two, Maya Lay Butters. Head coach for Ankeny Centennial is Jessica Reinhardt. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I could direct your attention to the area in front of the score table for the introduction of our officials for this match. Our first referee, Jay Grassley. Our second referee, Samantha Stone. And our line judges, Kent Kosur and Bob Fessler. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for state tournament volleyball. All righty, we're ready to go here on court two. Court one, it's 24-19 Valley looking to take the opening set over there, over Dowling. And they're in set point here in the Valley serving. Des Moines and Des Moines playing over there and Inkeny and Inkeny playing here. <laughs> Before we uh, begin our match, we'd like to uh, once again thank the Iowa Farm Bureau, proud title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union for their support. The Farm Bureau has an office in each county across Iowa. I'd like to thank the offices here. Well, it's one office because they're both in the same town, Polk County office there. Thank you, Iowa Farm Bureau, for supporting the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union and the Iowa Girls. So that makes it easy. You just call Polk County if you're in Ankeny. <laughs> Thank them. 
Well, what's the key here uh, to get started, Molly? Oh, it always comes down to serving and passing well. That's, you know, to get your best game, you've got to do well at that. And then, you know, just controlling the, the errors and not having too many of those and staying aggressive and adjusting to what the other team is is giving you. So maybe you're getting kills on the line and you just keep going there or, yeah, just being able to adjust. Ankeny will serve first to get it started. And it goes long on the first serve. You see that sometimes too with uh, a little nerves and adrenaline here to start it out. Yeah, I feel like the first like five to eight points are always kind of just like everybody kind of getting settled in and it isn't real good predict, isn't a good predictor of the entire game. Brooklyn Conger comes in to serve for an IMT insurance substitution. Set up outside into the double blocking down for Point Ankeny. And we're tied early on 1-1. Is back to serve is the libero Bailey Carlson. Set up outside and that gets through for a point. I think they're expecting her to have a heavy swing and she just rolled it into the donut area. Smart. Miller with the kill. Here's Lazier with the serve and that one just a little tap over at the net. Reagan Hanfelt. And Chloe Wiederen comes in to serve for an IMT insurance substitution. Learn how you can be worry free at imtims.com. Ankeny serving tight at two apiece into the net. Ink and he wants is to give two out of three points on serve Serving. errors, but <laughs> hopefully they, they can cut that down. Delaney Miller back to serve for Centennial. Bumped up. Now have to get it over. They punch it into the middle. Set outside. Dumped across. And now back the other way, looking for the open hole. Now set back across. And Ankeny handles it. Pushed up again. It's Pratt on that last kill attempt there. This end of the double block, Pratt pushes it over. Bumped up by the libero. Now cross, they go deep. Quick set in the middle and down by Jaden Pratt. Uh, actually, I think that was, was that Ava Kronberg. Was that? Kronberg, yeah, 18. Oh, 18, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 4-2 Centennial, serving. Bumped up, Leah Butters into the net and across, and man, those, that, that's a tough one to handle when it catches that cord. Right, so many odd, like sc oddly scored points right now, which, uh, yeah, some of them are, you can't practice how to defend. <laughs> 5-2 Centennial serving now. Set up, dumped over. The butters, the barrel set it. Now they go outside with it. Ankeny does. Quick in the middle, and Ankeny will handle it. Back outside and into the double block and down. Mixdorf was in there on the block. And Centennial, a four-point lead here. Bump goes a little wide. They'll bring it back in and then blocked at the net. And point Centennial. Yeah, Ankeny just, like, they need a good pass here. Centennial serving again, leading 7-2. Back outside, and that one hit long by Scheib. 
And timeout Ankeny. So they just, uh, Ankeny just seems to be on their heels scrambling a little bit early here. Yeah, again, I mean, I hate to sound like told you so, but <laughs> <laughs> the serve and pass game right now is what's hurting Ankeny. Um, and give credit to Ankeny Centennial. They are very good servers, and you can't always tell that by watching um, the video. When you're down there receiving it and on the court, it, they are serving very aggressively. So probably just a timeout to, you know, regroup, you know, give them a little them, vote of yeah. confidence. And, and, you know, it goes fast when you're actually out there playing and gets away from you quickly. So, yeah, six point lead here by Centennial. They take the timeout. And Delaney Miller back to serve again for Centennial. Sometimes that timeout breaks up the offensive flow, and that went into the block. Kept alive, though. Bumped up by the libero, set outside, and hammered home on the kill by Pratt. Yeah, Jaden Pratt saw the block set up cross, and she just hit that perfect shot in the corner. That was pretty. Pratt goes wide, and that ends the run. That was a good run by Miller. <laughs> yeah, they run off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Yeah, if you can have any server do that, you're pretty happy. Now Ankeny tried to go on a run of their own here, trailing 9-3 early. Low serve. Dug out of there. I believe they called somebody in the net, but yeah. Oh. The point Ankeny. Serving is shy. And that one into the net. Well, that's the third service error we've had here on Ankeny early going. My Leah Butters back to serve for Centennial. Again, talk about the serve. That serve had no spin on it. It's like a knuckleball. Yeah, it just came in, and you could tell she tried to get it up in the air, and it just came off her hands. Well, it moves at the last minute. Yeah. Those, the, the float serve, that if there's no spin on the ball, it's lethal. And that one gets the ricochet, and they get it over, but they're going to say. Four, yeah, four contacts. Yeah. So up to eight point lead here now. Leah Butters, the libero serving. Right in front of the net, and there's a kill for Ankeny. That was a good pass and therefore led to a kill. Reagan Hanfeld, the six foot junior, back to serve for Ankeny, down by seven. Set it back, and cross court handled there. And just over the top of the block, and down for the point. Low outside serve, and set right back over. And that was a tough serve by Hanfelt, and they sent that overpass. And uh, I think it was Ridgeway that pounded it down. Set up outside, and that was cross court wide on the big hit. But isn't this game crazy? Yeah, like the big got swings. <laughs> it was an eight point lead. Now it's cut in half, down to four. I think both teams know that. Like, they played each other. Yeah. Ankeny was up two sets to, to none and lost in five. And, yeah, they all know that they it, it's possible to come back and win, and it's possible to, to get beat. So point goes to Ankeny.
Set outside. Cross court. Handled by Leah Butters. Oh, just a miss hit there. And that'll go to. The setter was trying to dump that, but just didn't quite get the right contact on it. Lauren Dockendorf comes back in for an IMT insurance substitution. And she'll serve from the right side. Set up outside, cross court, handled by Carlson. Back the other way, dumped over. Can't set it quick in the middle. Oh, and she found the hole. And Willie with the kill. Smart shot to use the blocker's hands. A lot of times you see that big block there, and if you just swing for the top of them, it makes it a lot tougher on the defense. Outside, cross court, handle, but dump back in and down by Pratt. Centennial serving now, 14-10 with the lead. Set the middle, that one's gonna go long. Dumped it over, but they're going to say two hits. Didn't quite get it. Yeah, a just good backpedaling and, yeah. uh, to get to that ball. So, Jaden Pratt back to serve once again. Chance to play it now. Pratt handles it in the back, cross court. Libero gets a hand on it, then dump back over right at the net was Leisure. Yeah, Willie did a good job of trying to fill in because the setter couldn't quite get there, but Anthony Centennial was ready for that. Chance now for Centennial. They set it up, tried to go that back corner and found the open area. Pollock got a hand on it, but Looking for that back left corner, and it did the job with the shot. Served by Coleman. Set up outside, and that's in. That's wide, wide, I think out. Her oh. out. Okay, it is out. <laughs> I had to look at. People kind of get frustrated with officials, but like it just, it all happens really fast. Yeah. He knew it was out. He just, he just wanted to check it. Yeah. yeah. And there's a kill off of uh, Dockendorf. Yeah, that was Anna Sash getting that kill. And I think she and Pratt were starters last year on the Ankeny Centennial team, but a lot of new faces. Conger in to serve for an IMT insurance substitution. Set outside, way outside. Now there's a chance for Centennial. And they get it across, back over. And a diving attempt there, but Carlson just got too deep and couldn't get turned around on it. I got to correct myself. I know Miller played last year as well, too. But I do know that Centennial graduated quite a few people from last year's team. Got a timeout. Time now, fans, to tell you about Central College. They have you covered with career building programs and with tuition less than $20,000 a year and tons of scholarships. It's the best decision ever. You can apply today at central.edu. So, another timeout here, and as Centennial kind of right on the edge of that 20 point mark, and when you get there, then it seems like it's a little tougher to reel them back in because you're within five of closing out the set. Yeah, I think they, I mean, clearly Centennial wants to push ahead and, and get this game, not let them back in, get any kind of momentum. Um, and both teams have a lot of new players to the state tournament. So 
you know, the momentum's going to shift here and there. Shy back to serve again, 95.3% serving percentage. Efficiency. And that one is set it up and knock it down right in the middle. So Bailey Carlson, who's serving, her uh, aunt was my best friend in high school. So oh, yeah. it's kind of funny how Iowa, it's just so many connections. And Jaden Pratt, you know, her mom played softball against her. And Quick set, and that's wide. This is exactly what Ankeny wants. Ankeny Centennial's just got to, you know. Called the timeout, got the point, got right, the serve got back. Got the second point. Now, Bailey Carlson, the libero back there serving again into the middle. And Carlson goes up and gets that one. Go. Scramble for it. They got it over. And then just a little one-handed stuff back <laughs> by Centennial. Cronenberg. Sometimes it's that awkward, like, you know, the setter's supposed to take the second ball, but somebody else is closer, but they don't want to take it from them. You know, like girls... They just went, you just got to play the ball. Set back and right into that block. Can they get it? They do. Somehow kept that alive. Wow. That Delaney was a great Miller. job by Inkeny Centennial <laughs> to just, like I said, just play the ball. Just, you know, pop it up however you can. Bumped up. That's going to be right at the net, but. Now Ankeny has a chance to play it. This one gets over. Set outside again. And. I think they're calling back row attack. Back row attack yeah. on yeah. Centennial. No, on, on Ankeny. Or was it on yeah. Ankeny? Oh, I'm sorry. Whoop. He just called it a little bit late. I think he was just looking to see. Was she back row? Quick set. Dropped in there, and they can't get it. Oh, well, Hankety gets it back. And they'll have some Hanfelt. substitution. Oh, you. What's that? Oh, I didn't know if you need to say your subs, but Hanfelt, yeah. she is. Uh, she's committed to play at Iowa State. Um, not next year, but the next following year, and I think she's a real good high jumper as well. Ike was one of them that came in. That one through the block, but out. Oh, was that down? Was that, oh, I guess yeah, they called the touch, the didn't they? Yep. Yeah, they called the touch. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll get up to speed here. Well, when you have you have to look down at names. <laughs> Cross court. Oh, good save by the libero. Now back the other way. Bumped up. Set back. Good hard smash, but they handle it. And they don't handle that one. Off the net court and down. Or Ankeny. Yeah, Cameron Scheib, she needs to, to really get going, and she's a leader on the team. She's a real aggressive player and um, can get a run of points for Ankeny. Quick set. Oh, and that one, not returnable. Set point now for Centennial. They'll send Maya Lee Butters back. The sophomore libero served for the first set here. Oh, miscommunication, and that tough will go. Serve. Yeah, very tough serve. That will go to Centennial, game one, 25 to 16. We'll take a break and come back with the second set after this. You're watching the girls' state volleyball tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service.
When you choose Delta Dental of Iowa, you set a chain of good in motion because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you get more than great dental and vision insurance. You make a difference for others. Choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. Back here at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau and the Girls Union Digital Network powered by Mid-American Energy. Time now to look at the first set stats brought to you by Sukup. Celebrating 60 years, Sukup Manufacturing offers decades of quality products from a family-owned business, a winning combination producing innovative, reliable grain storage and grain handling products. Visit Sukup.com to find out more. And let's take a look at the stats here. Okay. Well, yeah, mine's not. Do you have yours? Not here. updating either. No. Okay. Well, we'll we'll update you as soon as we can here. But I think the key thing is some miss serves. You know, to start the game for Inkeny. Inkeny Centennial is serving aggressively and confident. And they took it. And it was like tied two-two, and then from there, Centennial. Took it on the run. Go ahead. There was our stats now. Yeah, Ankeny Centennial, one one more kill than Ankeny. Um, hitting percentage, I, I I guess I go off hitting efficiency, so I'm not sure what that, if that's uh, what that is. But then um, ace serves, Ankeny Centennial has two to Ankeny's none. And about the same amount of digs and, and one block for Ankeny Centennial. But um, I, I think we don't have the miss serves there. And um, just some other random points that were scored. I think this is going to be a different game. So Centennial will serve to start the second set. Quick set in the middle, block back there by Centennial. Yeah, Anna Sash, she leads Ankeny Centennial in blocks. She got her 100th career block this season, which is a lot. Number nine with the block. Outside, and Butters handles it. Leah Butters, uh, Libero, oh, they tried to go back the other way, and that worked in the end there. As Willie sent it the other way, and then uh, Centennial couldn't handle it, and they get the point. Bailey Carlson, the Libero, serving. Kind of deep. Now Centennial will play it, and it's block and down point Ankeny. So I think we had had one block in our little stats thing for the whole mat or whole set and now we've had two blocks in a row. And a great serve had a dive kind of pancake it up there and then three put blocks. Back down. <laughs> Reagan Hanfell gets that one. That was a good short serve by by Bailey Carlson. And a Can quick take. yeah quick two two-point lead here. That one comes back in the middle again. Quick outside set, and that one is just down. Catches the line on the far side. That was a great shot by Miller. And Delaney Miller. It's a yeah, rocket. She, she's their leader for kills and attempts, and so... Conger in to serve for an IMT insurance substitution for Centennial. Set back, cross court. Oh, what a shot. Hanfelt fired it over and they couldn't handle it. And a point back to Ankeny. They bring in uh, Wiederen and Ike. Reader will go back to serve. Set up. And that time off the block and down. Big swing. Powered through there. Gabby Mixdor, the 5'9 senior, back in the front row for Centennial as they serve here. Trailing now by one. 
But Leah Butters handled it. Set up. Block. Back over. Over again. Now chance for Ankeny. Quick in the middle. Handled in the back by Pratt. Outside. Cross court off the Hawkettes. Now my Delaney stats Miller. are working. I think that's Delaney Miller's yep. sixth kill. Um, she's really started going even more so this this set. Yep, that's what they have her for, six. Um, and that one is For the Ankeny Hawkettes, they've got two players with four kills. So that's Hanfell and Willie. So they're middles. Ankeny serving. Shy. Set. And they keep it alive. Nope. Yep, they both the up ref and, and the line judge looked at each other because they wanted to confirm before he called it, but the, they thought it had hit the ground officially. Paper thin, but <laughs> goes to Centennial. Bump back. Cross court, looking for that hole, but sliding in and getting his shy. Now, outside, oh, just got it across there. Now back. Yeah, back row attack there. You know, those tight ball uh, situations for a setter that's back row. The only thing they really can do is pull it back to their hitters, which is tough, um, and it just, went over the net and it's considered an attack. That one goes low and an ace. Delaney Miller back serving again. Yeah, she's playing with confidence for sure. Well, that one just handled, it gets across. It's a quick set there. Back, a little joust at the net. And then the big hammer. And the little dump over wins the point. Yep. <laughs> that by Reagan Hanfell. Right in the donut. That's what, right in the middle of the donut. <laughs> That's what we call it. Stop mentioning donuts. I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> There's the setback. Cross quarter, handled. Double hit called on Ankeny. And that'll make it 8-6, and that one is gonna go wide to make it 9-6. Maya Lee Butter serving. She has that serve that seems hard to handle. Bumped up. Now set back into the net. Block. Again, this time shoved over by Aggie. Libero will bump it up, and that one won't get across. Centennial widen the lead now, 10 to six. Outside, Butters. Into the block and out, point Centennial. Ankeny wants a timeout. Our first time out of this set. And while we have a timeout, let me tell you that fans, you can get your official state tournament merchandise online or scan the QR code. There it is. And on your screen now or visit IGHSAU.org to browse and customize your merchandise to match your style. So 
If you're watching the stream, you can't make it down, you can still order the merchandise. And a little time here in the timeout. Uh, I always like to look at who's leading in kills at, at this point, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And uh, for Ankeny Centennial, we've been talking about Miller. Um, she's at seven kills. And then you've got Ava Cronenberg. She's got four kills. Jaden Pratt has three. And then they have um, three others with a kill apiece, too. So pretty spread out. The libero serving again. This one right up there and just a little dunk shot for Jaden Pratt. Now Jaden's got an extra one. Those are counted. A lot of times stats kind of go, you know, but that's actually a kill, not a block, because nothing was, no one was attacking it at her. Bumped up by Carlson. Now there's a block. <laughs> When you get pushed in volleyball, it's a shove. good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yes. Well, when it's, as long as it's your own teammate. Yes. <laughs> when you do something good, you have to, like, brace yourself because it's coming. And there's a shot by Corona, or uh, Ivy, Ike, excuse me, and uh, Leah Butter sets it up, and that is through the block. And I can't say enough about Maya Lee Butters. Her serve is really good. And she's serving it straight down that line. And is it just the knuckle or what is yeah, it? Yeah, and she puts it right on the line. Yeah, see, see that? It, yeah, I no mean, rotation at all. You can see it like it just hanging there. And that time it gets down, they get the return. But it just even when they do return it, there's no spin off it when you when you. Yeah. Hit it, and it just sometimes goes awry. Now back in for uh, is Dockendorf, the senior, to serve for Ankeny. They need a little run here to pull back in in this second set, trailing one set to none. Five-A quarterfinal here. Dockendorf runs it down. Now they'll get it over with Carlson. Quick set at the net, and that is pushed back. And this one goes down with the shot. Like I said, Ankeny Centennial is just so strong in so many positions. And I know talking to, to coach, she said they're, they have strength. Their strength is their depth in all their positions. And even not kids that are on the court, but kids are, that are on the bench that can fill in. There's that block again. Addie Pollock serving. That one is they call a lift on Centennial. Yeah, it kind of rattled around. They couldn't quite get under it. A lot more blocking going on this set. We had one in the first set, and we've had five. Pushed over but wide. Point Ankeny. Serving is Coleman. They set it outside, dump it over, handled. Now bump back out. Cross quarter. Libero gets it. Still a scramble by Centennial. They'll get it across. Chance for Ankeny now. And they recover. Back outside again, this time through, but Libero right there. And that time just kind of ran into each other. Jaden Pratt, the junior, back to serve. Pumped up by Carlson outside. Centennial set it up again, cross court handled. Set in the middle, handled by Carlson. And that goes <laughs> long. Pratt went to dodge that ball. 
And speaking of Pratt, she is actually going to play basketball at Illinois State. She was one of those that was not sure if she was going to play volleyball or basketball, but made that decision uh, recently. Okay, we have a timeout here. Let's take a quick break at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. On the Girls' Union Digital Network, you see the Ankeny huddle there. Powered by Mid-American Energy, Dar Danielson, Molly Geis. Centennial leading Ankeny, 18-9. Seemed like maybe that last match where Ankeny got ahead early and Centennial saying, hey, no, we're going to come out. This isn't going to happen this time. It seems like they've come out right away ready to go. Set outside. Handled in the back by Pratt. Now Pratt in the middle, just pushes it over, catches the net, but goes. And then into the block, scramble for it. Scheib. Quick set. Dump to the back corner, and it's long. One of the key things that I'm seeing, like, in the second set is Ankeny right now is hitting negative, which means they have more errors than kills in the second set. So that's something they really have to turn around. Whereas, um, you know, even after that error, Ankeny Centennial only has three errors but nine kills. That one way up over the net. Now back the other way and down. Boy, that was a contortion <laughs> there by Leisure. She got up in the air and hit it back the other way and it got through to where nobody could get it. And at times it seems like Ankeny, they're just running into each other a little bit on that second time it's over they just can't can never get things stress sorted the out. communication yeah. enough now, nothing to communicate there you just ram it home yeah that point. was a great swing <laughs> good kill there and we'll see some substitution again and Ankeny has had some you know they've had to face some adversity they've had some new faces on the court um, they've got to communicate because they're not always going to be playing to the you know, next to the same person all the time. And that was an IMT insurance substitution. Ike back in. And that one is down. Yep, blockers were up, but just a little bit late and hadn't pressed. And she used their hands for a kill. Leisure. Cam Leisure back to serve. Carlson outside. And right into the block. Cronenberg right there. And now Carlson will just get it over. Set outside and through by Miller. Ankeny Centennial is just playing with a ton of confidence right now and playing smart. And Ankeny's just trying to kind of figure out how to slow it down at this point. Yeah, sometimes you feel like you're all you are is on defense, and Ankeny Centennial looks to be on offense all the time. There's a good answer. Yep, yep that's one get the serve back. Back to serve is Cameron Scheib. Set up quickly. Oh, and that hit the antenna. Looks like it's 1-1 on the other court and Dowling leading early in the third, 2-1. And the other 5A quarterfinal going on. I was so focused, I hadn't even looked. Yeah, I know, you get, <laughs> that one is down. A serve for Miller. Now, this is a little different before the 
you know, you had the two courts together back side to side. This one, they're yeah. lengthways, but that one catches the net string and then a little miscommunication and the set will go to Centennial. The second set, 25-12, but like you say, you get focused in. Centennial's focused in right now. Ankeny's got to find something to come back and take this third set if they want to keep this going here at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Something exciting is growing on Iowa farms these days. Innovation. From tractors that seed, weed, and harvest with data-driven precision to drones that scout or plant cover crops to protect soil and water. Even our animals live in smart homes with round-the-clock care. Technology keeps your food safer, water cleaner, and makes us more sustainable. Because what we do here benefits everyone here. Life on the farm makes everyone's life better. Here in Greater Des Moines, we're the unexpected sports mecca that feels like home. We are the big balls, the little kickers, the underdogs, and the bulldogs. We've got events wacky and wild, big and small, we host them all. That old sports cliche, nobody believes in us? Nah, when you come here, you'll believe. Because in Des Moines, only the S's are silent. Let's go! Being your family's grocery store isn't just about having the best butcher cut meat or the freshest produce. It's not about having the highest quality online shopping or experts who handpick your groceries. And it's not just about giving you the most affordable prices. Being your family's grocery store means making sure that you have all of that. And that's why at Fairway Meat and Grocery, it's what we've always been about. At the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Centennial up, Centennial up two sets to none. We'll take a look at the stats here in just a second. The Sukup stats celebrating 60 years. Sukup Manufacturing offers decades of quality products from a family-owned business, a winning combination of producing innovative, reliable grain storage and grain handling products. Visit Sukup.com. Dar Danielson here and time to uh, Molly Geis take a look at the stats from that second set. Yeah, I think the, the big thing that changed after the first set and the second set is the, the kills. Um, Ankeny Centennial has 21, Ankeny has 16. Also, you factor in um, Ankeny has 10 attack errors and Ankeny Centennial has 7. So um, the difference there, you know, Ankeny Centennial hitting a lot more effectively uh, makes a big difference. And then Ankeny Centennial, again, is putting on a serving clinic. They have three ace serves. Um, and I guess four A serves it shows here. I had had seen three, but um, and and that they're really serving tough down the line too. Even if they're not getting an ace, they are putting Ankeny out of system, and not able to use their middles or even get a, a solid attack. So Ankeny serves to start the third. Liliana Coleman, and that one is returned hard and out. Point to Centennial. We'll have substitution. In is uh, Brooklyn Conger for an IMT insurance substitution. Learn how you can be worry-free at imtims.com. You know Ankeny Centennial in that in that meeting between second and third set was talking about, remember what happened before when we played, because <laughs> Ankeny had won the first two, and then Ankeny Centennial came back and won the next three. So they're like, get a strong start, like don't let that happen here. And don't let off the gas, yep. keep them, yeah. And that's cross court, but handled. Dumped in there. Tie for Ankeny. Oh, and it's not, they're not gonna get it. Dockendorf put that in there. And unreturned, and uh, we'll go back over to Ankeny. Bailey Carlson to serve. That was, that was Addie Breck. Quick, and that's long. And we're tied at two in the third set.
Bumped up, set outside. And that's going to... Miller just, Point, yeah. she knows how to take that aggressive swing and use the blocker's hands. You know, sometimes the block's up, but you know, if you swing hard, it's it's going to ricochet off and, and go out. It, right, yeah, it's going to go out. Set back, good hard smash by Hanfelt, but return. Now set back to Hanfelt. This time she dumps it in. And there's Cronenberg. They were, Inkeny was moving uh, hand felt around behind the setter. I think possibly trying to avoid that block in the middle, um, but then was a little out of position to get the block herself. Back over, hand fell. And that's touched the wide to be point Ankeny. Wiedering and Ike coming back in. Wiedering will serve for Ankeny. Down by one, they need a good run here, and that will go long. It'll send Delaney Miller back to serve. Set up, dumped over. And Ike gets it across, and sometimes it's weird how that ball in the middle is just the hardest one to get. Good, good too, yeah. You know, everybody's doing a good job of going for it, but Shibe serving again. Yeah, excuse me. This one, playable in the middle, and Shibe. That's a hard one sometimes you're getting up in the air and judging the angle to get it across the net. Here's Maya Lee Butters. Her serves have been problems today for Ankeny. That one is sent out. A kill for Ankeny. Ankeny's, you know, every team here has so many good kids that are, are on the bench and so now they're trying their outside is freshman Marley Ellison, um, number 12 for Ankeny, giving her a shot, so that's exciting. Hanfelt drops it in for a point, we're tied at six. Good low serve, and that's gonna be in for an ace. Ankeny up one now, the third set. Drops it in, this time they get it. Pushed over, set outside, into the block and down. Finley Griner, one of them over there. Pollock serving. And there's the, that one goes over the side press table. Honestly, though, that's what Ankeny needs is some scrap plays where they can score and get excited. But Ankeny Centennial did a good job of not letting that happen. Addy Pollock back to serve again. They sent it outside. And Leah Butters handles it. Now they'll have to get it over. Pratt does. Set in the middle. Block and out. Pollock on a serving spree here. That one drops in. Like I said, you you really can't tell if you're watching this uh, somewhere other than right down on the court how tough those serves really yeah. are and. I know parents are probably like, oh, just get that pass up, but it's not that easy. Ike sends that over. Yeah, until you look at it close, like Leah Butters, when you 
if you just focus and you see that it's coming over, no rotation at all, straight right. through. Right, and they're just flat. They're yeah. not arched and coming over, and you don't have time. It's it's one of the tougher things to do is receive a serve. But <laughs> that one bounced back over, handled. No, Ankeny will get it across. Leah Butters set it back and long. <coughs> Excuse me. Ankeny hanging close here. One, one point set. They'll be serving. Quick set in the middle. That one is down. <laughs> they just went with her comfort. Her comfort is just running a quick in front. Uh, she had try to slide the play before and um, Brad serving that one close to the net but they get it over cross court handled dig. Shibe, and then put away by Centennial Sash with the point. Yeah, she's their block leader, and she's really making Ankeny think about where they want to go and swing. Back toward the middle, and that one's a good shot there. That isn't going to be returned by Scheib. Alana Coleman, the junior, comes in to serve for an IMT insurance substitution. Set back over, just tried to push it and couldn't quite get it across Delaney Miller. Coleman to serve again. That one hit hard and too deep off the touch. Big swing by Pratt from the back row. And Ankeny hanging right there, right there, but just can't push across. And now Centennial, 13 to 11, leading two sets to none in the third set. That one is gonna get through. Good hard shot by Scheib. <laughs> Bailey Carlson will serve for Ankeny. Almost a mishandle there. Set back and down by Hanfell. That was a beautiful slide. She's. She's right now their most effective hitter. Um, I think that takes her to eight kills right now in, in 15 or 16 attempts. So they've got to get the ball to Reagan. Back over and down. There she is. Yep, you yep. called it right there again <laughs> on the block. Ankeny up one. Trying to take this set to keep it alive. And again. They put a triple block up there. <laughs> a lot of maroon jerseys at the net, and yeah. Centennial calls a timeout. And let's take a break. We'll be back with more at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. You're watching the Girls' Union Digital Network powered by Mid-American Energy, Dar Danielson, Molly Geis, and Ankeny. 
Dara, the joy of this is knowing that, that it is possible that one of the Ankeny can come back and make this a five setter. Um, Ankeny Centennial has got to push through like they're a great team and they're they're up 2-0, but they can't relax. I think that's what makes it so fun and people want to stay tuned to see what happens. Bailey Carlson serving and that one will not get across. They've run off a string now here. Ankeny has the timeout but Ankeny comes out of it, gets the point, puts the lead up to three. There's a serve and that one is deep. That's been the one issue here today is yeah, you know, those service areas come at inopportune times. Well, it's never good, but. Right. It's been better. That first set they had three, I think, yeah. missed and now it's just a total of five service errors. Leo Butters. Bumps it outside, cross court. Chance now for Ankeny. Push back. Set again, quick in the middle. Dumped over by Hanfell. She's sure having fun out there. She's really come on on this set here. That was a smart shot too, because she was ready to swing away, but she was up just a little sooner than the set was coming and made a smart decision to just tip it over and that's that donut, but it's really tough to know who's supposed to play that and everybody's back a little bit for a hard swing. Weeder in and serves and gets the ace. Off the bench for an IMT insurance substitution and pays a dividend right away. And it's 18-14. Ankeny trying to stay alive here. That's a great serve. Yeah, that one was low. Leah Butter somehow got it. Now Ankeny setting up the offense again. This one off the touch is point Ankeny. Now Ankeny Centennial also had a triple block up there. and uh, She did a great job swinging and using their hands. Like that's intimidating to see that triple block. Leah Butters bumps it up. Now quick set. Dumped over, handled there by Scheib. Now back across court by Ike. Set outside. Pushed over. Right there in the corner to handle it. Quick set. Dumped in. Ooh, that was a tough alive. one for yeah. system. Weeder and got it. Good rally here, Ankeny up. Handled the back, set outside, cross quarter this time will score for Centennial. Miller puts a ball right on that line, cross court in between the two defenders. She is really good at that. But Ankeny up by four here. That's Centennial back. Scrambling. Miller serving. Pushed over. Miller bumps it up. Quick set there and down. Cronenberg. Cronenberg is for Ankeny Centennial. She's second highest on the team now for kills behind Miller. It's always good when you can get your middles going. Centennial serving, still trailing here in the third set. They lead two sets to none. Ankeny off the tip, the kill by Hanfell. Yeah, Scheib got a good pass there, and then they were able to use their middle and smart set to, to, to get it to um, Reagan Hanfell. 2016 Ankeny. And just a little tap up and put away by Cronenberg. That's that ball where it's like all you can do when you're a back row setter is just to pop it up to your middle and hope they're there. That was. Well, when you got that size and reach of Cronenberg, yeah. you just got to get it in the area, don't you? It was well executed. Outside cross court For winner the there. Freshman. She's stepping up big. <laughs> That was that cross court shot I was just talking about from Miller. 
Ankeny not going down easy here. They're trying to take this third set and keep this alive. Served by Hanfeld. Into the middle, and they caught him there. I think they were looking to go back outside, and they sent it in the middle, and boom. Yeah, good off speed. Addy Pollock back to serve for Centennial. Quick set there. Jump back over by Centennial. They react into the block. Scramble for it. Oh, there's that power by Pratt. Lead holds it to Pollock serving again. Long. Lauren Dockendorf back in for an IMP insurance substitution. She'll do the serving here. Trying to close it out for Ankeny. And two hits they call on Centennial. Timeout on the floor. What switch for Ankeny here? Just well, Ankeny is starting to pass better, so then they can have more options to get a good swing. Like they're getting a swing that's in front of the 10 foot line versus they were just struggling to, to keep it over and alive there for a little bit. But yeah, and they've kind of got that Centennial doing that now. They've, right. They're passing and getting their offense going, and now Centennial has the scramble on yep, it. Isn't they? Yep, and it's just a confidence issue, too. Like I feel like Ankeny's looking more confident than they were before just on, you know, going for the ball and just, just play. Um, but Ankeny Centennial is a good team and you don't, you don't know what can happen here. They're back to the wall in this set, but they, I don't know. I wouldn't count them out. Ankeny trying to close out the set and go to another one. Quick in the middle, oh, beautiful look. Pushed it right back in that corner over there. Smart and shot. She could have swung, and uh, she knew that that was open and went for that deep corner. Grinder gets it over there. Jaden Pratt back to serve. And just a quick push at the net. Gets it over. If Ankeny wants to take it four, they, this is a big point right here. Bumped up by Carlson. Over in the middle, diving by Leah Butters. Still kept alive, Carlson gets it over. Set outside, into the block and down for Ankeny. And that was just, Ankeny did a much better job of like those, where they get a touch on the block and to dig it up instead of before they were kind of looking around to see if maybe somebody else was gonna get it. To get set, that point was big. Set point for Ankeny here. Back to serve, Coleman. Bumped up outside and there's the kill. Who do you call when you need a point? Delaney Miller. Right. Set point one. There's hitters like Delaney that can, they they know where the defense is and they hit away from it. It's, it's pretty awesome. Brooklyn Conger goes back to serve now for Centennial. Set point number two. Carlson. Outside. Set up, Miller. Handled there by Dockendorf. Block. Oh, oh. Dug, by her, dug by her shoulder. <laughs> and down. <laughs> for the set. I'd Ankeny like to see that replay. Stays alive. 25 22. So Scheib got blocked, and I'm pretty sure she dug it with her shoulder she, to get it over. Take a look here. No, that's oh, the, the final that one the there, kill, but you're yeah. right. It did kind of come <laughs> off her shoulder and came up. But let's uh, 
2-1 here. Centennial will be back with the fourth set after this at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Well, it's being the right place at the right time. And you know, this is true in history with a lot of things. Agriculture where it's a moving dynamics out there, you have to have somebody that drives out to their farm and still worries about whether it's rained or what the grain price is or climb up in the grain bin and uh, make sure that everything's uh, working like it's supposed to. When you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. We'll go to the fourth set here at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau or Sukup bringing you stats. Sukup, 60 years of manufacturing quality products from family-owned business. A family-owned business, a winning combination of producing innovative, reliable grain storage and grain handling products. Visit Sukup.com. And anything you see out of that third set that... Yeah, uh, you know, we talk about volleyball as a game of errors, and in that set... Um, Ankeny Centennial had two more errors than Ankeny did. Um, same number of kills, um, and it was a three-point swing. Uh, and then um, serve errors, Ankeny Centennial had one more. I mean, it's just it's such a small window of making errors that can change the outcome of the game. Uh, but here on, on the screen for the whole match so far, Ankeny Centennial has 37 kills to Ankeny's 30. Um, it's still more effective uh, hitting than Ankeny. Um, and, you know, that kind of swings per set. Uh, but Ankeny Centennial still putting on that serving clinic with seven aces. Ankeny's now got four. Uh, Ankeny Centennial, a couple more digs. And Ankeny with a couple more blocks, with 11 blocks versus nine. So that's switched. We kind of knew Ankeny wasn't going to go down without <laughs> trying to get back and get a set. Now the question is, tough job, can they get three in a row and can Centennial close it out? They start with Jaden Pratt serving. Send it outside, into the block and down. Point for the Jaguars. Yeah, like I said, I, I actually think it's good that Ankeny has Ankeny Centennial as their first match because Ankeny Centennial is a team that, like I said, everybody's been talking about like potential to, to win this whole thing just all year long. Um, and so Ankeny, I think, can, you know, they're just, they live in the same town as them. They put their shoes on the same way, uh, you know, so maybe less intimidated. Um, and they have to play that way. Miller didn't get the hot smash across, but she did get the little pushback, and it's a point Centennial. Pratt to serve. Set outside. And point Ankeny. Oh, someone was in the net, huh? Apparently, yeah. Scheib Must went up. Must be in this far away. I can't, I don't always see that. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Quick set. And that's off the block and out by Greiner. Or they're saying Sash. Yeah. Excuse me. Conger serving. Scramble for it and it's not going to get back. 
And Conger will serve again. Like I said, Ankeny Centennial coming out solid here and making a statement. That one is deep. So Centennial pretty good on the service and then that last set they had a service error to keep time and then here one early and we'll have a substitution is IMT insurance substitution for Centennial back to serve is Wiederen. They got down and came back in the third set. Starting out down early. Let's see what Ankeny can do here. Wiederen sets it and the kill. That's just really key for Ankeny to, to win this match is to have good passes so that they can use um, hand felt. And all of their size, honestly. Like they've got tall middles, right side. Outside. And that one is not returnable. Miller. And for Miller, that's 15 kills. Set up outside. And that's down. Caught the back edge. Good swing by Scheib. She's gotten going a little bit more as the match has progressed as well. Scheib puts it in the middle. Leah Butters handles it. And Carlson. Right down the middle by Scheib. Centennial now over. Bumped up. Cross quarter by Ike. Hot smash, that time handled by Carlson off Miller. And that one is down. Catches the back. And we're tied at five. Some of those tight shots that weren't falling for Anki early are now falling. Yeah. That one goes a little wide. They bring it back, dump it in. And that is through. I was looking down, but was that Ellison? Yep. Ellison, yeah, she has just really stepped up. Came in, I think, in the second or third set and has had some good swings. And that one, <laughs> Miller right off the block. Delaney Miller back to serve. Tied at six. And Leah Butters handles it, but back, put right back there <laughs> by Ellison. She's doing a great job at just playing confidently. Just go up and swing at it. Don't think about it. I think she thought about maybe setting it back up. and Then you get the chance. She's a freshman. I always like that one. <laughs> Five eight freshman. Served by Ankeny. Into the middle, right block right back. By Willie. Outside Miller. Kept alive. And it's down. <laughs> That's that deep line shot that they have found this set. That's about three of them now yes. that they've hit right back there. That one is a little more in than the first two, but they're just finding the back line there. 9-6 Ankeny here at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. 
what's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Here at the Girl State Volleyball Tournament, presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Ankeny won the last set. Made it 2-1. They're ahead here in the four set. Jessica Reinhardt for... Centennial took a timeout. Let's see if uh, Centennial get things straightened out there. That one is long. <laughs> Ankeny tried to touch it but couldn't. Yeah. Luckily they didn't because yeah. it was out. Yeah. It's one of those, yeah. And Emma Lechte in for Centennial for an IMT insurance substitution. And that one gets down. Centennial finally getting one Jane of those Pratt at the with edge. That yeah, great Pratt. cross court shot. Yeah. So Maya Lee Butters go back to serve. She's been very successful today with that. Yeah, and knuckler. Give her a lot of credit. <laughs> She's such a great passer and defender, and and really sets up her team. That one had a bit of rotation on it, but put right back by Pratt. There's that serve. Even though she doesn't get an ace out of that, she you know sets up her. Her yeah, they got a, a kill. yeah. The the return was right over, yeah, right where you overpass, want it yep. on the net. And that one's going to be out the door and down the street. <laughs> Patty Breck back in for. Ankeny for an IMT insurance substitution. Back to serve is Dockendorf. Dockendorf with it there. Almost a collision, but now quick set. Carlson handles it. Dockendorf sets it in. Willie puts it away. We're seeing a lot better volleys now. Like everybody's kind of and playing and moving better. And early on, Ankeny, they were like running into each right. other, and now they're yeah a little more spread out and moving that offense around a little better here. Kind of found their legs, as it were. And that one dumped over and ping pongs around and will go down. Hattie Pollock will come back in to serve for. Centennial here, an IMT insurance substitution. They trail by three. Outside and then blocked back. Why? Wow, great, great swing. To, you know, everybody knew the ball was going to hurt based on the pass. <laughs> yep. And to use the blocker's hands like that, that was a pretty mature move. Serving is Coleman. Quick dump over. Scheib. Quick set in the middle, and that one's driven home. Griner. Yeah, Anna Sash, she's a really tough one to <laughs> defend, as well as a great blocker. Low serve. Now they'll play it over. Shy. And that gets down. <laughs> and they're painting the lines here. Wow. That's about the fourth shot that's been right close either on the side or the back that Ankeny's gotten the fall. Bailey Carlson serves with a four point lead. That one off the block and out that time. Miller. Brooklyn Conger will come in to serve. Set up. 
Jumped over. <laughs> Reagan Hanfell. They're just making better hitting decisions right now. Ankeny yeah, is. I think Centennial was kind of tense for the big hard shot, and she just popped right, right. it right over the top. And they're not making those errors that they were making yeah. earlier, which is making it tougher on Ankeny Centennial. And you get a little confidence. You get those on the line that are just mm -hmm. right in. Yeah, the ball's falling their way. Ankeny trying to keep the comeback going here. Bumped up. And they say it hit the antenna. Looks like a timeout centennial. They're trying to stem the comeback here of Ankeny. And we'll take a break. You're watching the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. What's affordable to her might not be for him. Our means may be different, but our need for energy is the same. And keeping the price for that energy as low as possible is exactly what we strive to do. It's what we've always done. Investments made 10 years ago have kept prices nearly unchanged. Investments made today will help keep prices predictable for the future. With energy that's cleaner, reliable, and affordable for all. An energy future that's American-made. Mid-American. Obsessively, relentlessly at your service. On the Girls' Union Digital Network, Dart Daniel Somali Geis, Randy at the controls as Ankeny. Trying to make a comeback after dropping the first two sets. 25-16, 25-12. They took the third, 25-22. Now leading this one, 16-11. Bumped up by Carlson. Set outside into the block. Carlson keeps it alive. Nifty little shot there. Quick set. They go back. The Coleman is there. Quick set again, into the block, oh, kept alive, in down. What a play by Reagan Hanfeld to keep that ball alive. That's just one of those plays that wasn't happening earlier uh, by all the Ankeny players, and she did a great job of reacting to that. See the replay here. That's impressive. Just, yeah, going down and got her hand under it. That off the block, bumped up. Quick set in the middle. Leah Butters keeps it alive. Now Pratt just shoves it over. Shy. Leah Butters is there back again. Leah Butters dumped over. Pushed over. Wabero gets it again. Cross quarter handled. Quick set. Dumped in. Leah Butters gets it again. She's been all over the, yeah, in this has. rally. She's not going to let that ball hit in the middle anymore. Shine into the block and down. Well, they're giving everybody their money's worth. <laughs> the entire town of Ankeny here. <laughs> Ankeny fans like it. It's Centennial, not so much. They like the first two sets a little better, but... Ankeny coming back with a seven point lead now here in the second set. There's an ace. Into the middle. Set up. And diving attempt, got it. Pratt. Now Ankeny will set it up again. Leah Butters. Miller into the block, but down. Ike right there to block it. Well, that was great hustle by Pratt to, to go dive after that. Unfortunately, they didn't get the point off of that. And, you know, earlier in the third set, I remember seeing um, Coleman for Ankeny. Dive Low serve is going to be an ace. I saw her dive after a ball that she didn't get, but you could see that they weren't giving up and she was showing her teammates, let's fight for this. And that's what you need from both sides is that extra hustle and communication right now. Low serve again, but this time handled. Now slapped over and down by Lazier. You don't always see that from a setter. That was a really 
good swing from her, you know, and a different way to dump the ball as a setter. Now Centennial finds themselves down nine as they get the serve back. Set back into the block and down. Lichty there with Miller. Those blocks will fire you up. Low serve, handled, and down. What a shot by <laughs> Hanfelt. Finds the back the corner. Again. Centennial, or Ankeny rather, three points away from sending this to a fifth set. Cross court. Quick set. Scramble for it. And two hits called. Those are tough. You just react, and sometimes it, that's all she could do was use her hands. And As Ike got it across there, and then scramble. Here's the serve by Scheib. Off Scheib, now back over. Leah Butter sets it up and into the block and back. Set point Ankeny to tie it up. Into the middle. Dumped over, kept alive, Carlson. Scheib. Bumped up again, now Leah Butters gets it over. Outside cross court, Leah Butters there again, now set up. And point Centennial, they hold off the first set point. Some great defense going on here. You're really seeing the best of both teams now. They're <laughs> finally both settled in and um, just playing really good volleyball. And wide, Anthony has sent it to the fifth set. 25-14, back from two sets down. Wow, hang on, we got set number five coming up. After this, you're watching the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. This is our son, Sebastian. In 2021, he took half a pill he didn't know was counterfeit. That tiny pill contained enough fentanyl to kill him almost instantly. Kids buy them on social media and share them with their friends, not realizing how dangerous they are. Please talk to your kids about not taking anything that's not directly prescribed to them. Our child will never get to grow up, but we want yours to be able to. Here at the Girls State Volleyball Tournament, presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau. Well, the battle of Ankeny looked to be a runaway at the start as Centennial goes out two sets to none, but Ankeny's battled right back. Molly Geis, uh, let's take a look at the stats here after that uh, fourth set. What do you see? Yeah, in that fourth set, um, you know, there was 11 points that uh, differentiate them, and Ankeny had five more kills than Ankeny Centennial. Uh, they had two less attack errors. Um, they had an an ex one more ace. Same number of blocks for both teams, three, which is great. Um, and then Ankeny did have two service errors. I, they, I don't think they got Ankeny Centennial's one at the end on this screen. But, um, you know, again, credit to the passers for Ankeny to get good passes so that they can get these kills. Um, we're seeing a lot more um, longer volleys and, you know, good defense and just kind of Finding that back line for Ankeny was big this this last match. So what's Jessica Reinhardt saying now in between this set? You know, or they came out strong, then you know, Ankeny got them on their heels. What is she saying to try to get them righted here? Yeah, well, I mean, probably just trying to calm their nerves, give them something to think about, something positive, like what is their game plan? 
and you know going back to just simple things you don't have to do anything wild and crazy you gotta you know serve aggressive get good passes and then the rest will come and just play volleyball and then on the other side for uh, coach Bethke what she's what she tell them well she's reminding them of what happened about whatever it was two three weeks ago where uh, it happened to work against them last time but Ankeny Centennial came back and won three in a row and so she's reminding them that hey you fought this far. Yeah, Let's go we, get we, it. We can do it here. And then, so. And a key with Ankeny, you know, talking to Coach Liz is that, you know, they've had to kind of believe in themselves this season. And that, that happened after they played Ankeny Centennial the first time because they have two big-time players that are hurt and haven't been playing and can't hurt, can't play because of their injuries. And to believe that they can do it without two really good players for Ankeny has been big. Well, Centennial will start with the serve. They came out and took the first two sets, just boom, came out and took control of them right away. Let's see what they do here, and let's see if Ankeny can keep that momentum going. Delaney Miller will serve to start set number five. Bumped up by Scheib. Back over to her, and that hits the antenna point Centennial. I may be wrong, but I think I'm right on this, that the Inkeny Centennial has rotated at three to have Miller start serving versus Pratt, uh, what they typically do, so. Delaney Miller serves down the middle. Carlson bumped outside. Scheib set back and off the block and down point Centennial. So that's what Centennial wants to see come out two quick points to start the fifth. Yeah, so with rotating, they, they have different matchups than what they had had the rest of the day. Quick set in the middle. Leah Butters bumps it outside into the block and out. Point Centennial. Centennial player went for it over there, but it right. hit before she could get to it. I think she pulled her so, arm back, but yeah. <laughs> it looked like she went for it. So, benefits them at this point. They pull out to quick 3-0 lead. Set outside again. And there's a kill by Shad. Bailey Carlson, the junior libero, will go back to serve here. Hopefully it's all right that I get a sh give a shout out to her grandparents. How do the Jenningses? No, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's Oops. long point. Shout out to all the grandparents right. and aunts and uncles and relatives that are watching here in Iowa and other places. Happy to bring this to you on the Girls Union Digital Network powered by Mid-American Energy. Bumped up through the block, kept alive there by Dockendorf. Scheib back over. And that's just long. <laughs> right call made there at the back by Coleman. She was going right. to try to get the hand up on that, pulled it back at the last second, and it went long. Yep. It's happened for both teams now in this And set. we're tied up. Coleman's, or Carlson, excuse me, serving. That one is out. Maya Leah Butters, the sophomore libero, back to serve. Back set. Dump back over by Pratt. And there's where being a middle blocker comes into play for Pratt because she was a really good blocker, but they moved her this year, and that's got to feel good. Set up outside. Shy. There's a tip. Yeah, touch on block. Back to serve is Chloe Wiederen, who came in on IMT insurance substitution. Serving now down one in the fifth set. Tied two apiece. Obviously, there's a kill. 
by Sash. Sash with seven kills. Right down the middle. Set outside to Shive and blocked. Sash up there on the block. She's coming up big this set. Timeout Ankeny. Down three. And momentum after the <laughs> timeout between sets is going to shift back to Centennial, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's such a short game. Like, 15 points goes so fast. First to 10 is a big deal. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens after this timeout. Ankeny, you know, hopefully for them, they answer. And Ankeny Centennial wants to just keep pushing ahead because anything can happen in this set. Yeah, as you mentioned, you go to 15 in the fifth, so... You get that lane if you can hold it. Even if you trade it a little bit, you're still at an advantage. In this set, you know, there's just Ankeny Centennial's got one one more kill, uh, one less error hitting, and um, they've got two blocks. So that's been a big difference in this short game so far. And, we and there's a it third. Up. Yeah, there's another. <laughs> And then it gets Ankeny thinking about where am I going to swing? Like their block is so big, it really gets. To yeah, be a and they were now, those last two sets of the offense. Everything was just moving so good. Now Centennial has them back on their heels. Quick set in the middle, and that one is down. Ankeny does a quick team huddle there, trying to just settle down. Let's say, let's get the serve back. And then the block again. Wow, blocking's huge this set. <laughs> Pratt. I, I know. Jaden's mom, and she is fun to watch. I wish we could have the camera on her right now because I bet she is <laughs> fiery. Well, timeout by Coach Bethke trying to reverse course here. And there's Coach uh, Reinhardt. She's fired up and saying, let's get this finished. Keep going what you're doing. <laughs> She's so competitive. Both uh, both coaches are, yeah. and what a what a match between the two. You just want it to end up like this, where it's a five setter and yeah, not you know town versus town, but it's also state tournament. Winner advances, loser the season's over, and something. This is going to be uh, a match they're going to be talking about for a while. For sure. As Centennial roared out, Ankeny roared back, and now here's Centennial with the lead serving. Outside, shy. Leah Butters goes down and gets it. Cross court kill. Pratt. <laughs> See the replay here. That's Leah Butters who kept it alive. Then they set it out there, and Pratt sends it home. Back to live action. Now dumped over by Ankeny. Leah Butters sets it up again. Pratt this time will. Get it in the middle. Scheib gets a hand on it. And it hit the antenna. And Ankeny Centennial, they're smart to use Pratt right now. She's such an athlete in all sports. Like, she's a state um, champion long jumper. She's a, a like a like probably a first-team all-state basketball, first-team all-state volleyball. Like, And she's been here. There's a hot smash by Hanfelt to shut off the run by Centennial. Seven straight points by Centennial. Now Ankeny's got a way to go to get back. Going to 15. Set outside and hit the antenna again. Off of block, I think, hit the antenna. Yeah. yeah. That was a good swing by Hanfelt. 
That one catches the net, goes down, and that's, those are so hard to return. They are. Because you don't know if it's going to come off long or short, and that one just kind of looped in there. Pollock went down to try to get at it, but. Another low sir. Leah Butters goes down, pips it alive, but now Ankeny will, Centennial will get it over. Chance to set it up for Ankeny. And into the block and down. Whoa. Yeah, Ankeny Centennial's block is killing it right now. Pratt back to serve. Handled by Carlson, set outside. Pratt. Miller. Shy bumps it up. Now cross court by Ike. Dumped over. Got to get it to hand. Set again. Looking for the corner, but this time. Didn't catch long. the line like no. they did in that fourth set. It was close. Set point, match point for Centennial. Outside, dumped in, and it's a be point. Ankeny to hold off set point one. Back to serve is Hanfell. She's a good server, but this is a lot of pressure. No, no errors for the next seven, seven points. No, it'd be eight because they'd yeah. have to win by two. Cross and down, Scheib holds off set point two. Never say never in volleyball. And a little, two Centennial players ran into each other. Quick set there and it's down. I think they're saying touch. Block touch. At least that's what it looked like from me. And a timeout now as Ankeny will take it to set point four. You see the huddle there. Kudos to Ankeny to not just, you know, they're fighting back. And I mean, it's a tough feat to come back and win this and not make any errors, but I have seen it happen before. I, I've so. seen it happen too, yeah, down yeah. here. And you got to be calm and you can't panic. Right. And that's what sometimes happens when you're looking at that set point. You, you, know, you try to hit it too hard or you go too quick. But, but Ankeny's so, got a lot of weapons, and yeah. they are probably saying, let's get a good pass. And they've, yeah, like I said, they've got a lot of weapons here. So Still need four more to tie it up. Almost a mishandle on the serve. That one over. Set back. Kept alive. Dumped in there. Set outside. Diving save. Pushed over. Quick set. Shibe. Leah Butters keeps it alive. Pushed over again by Centennial. Set outside. Through the block. Leah Butters will bump it up. And remember, Ankeny cannot make a hitting error yeah. here, or they... Yeah, any point, and it's so done. They're being, yeah. And it's down! They hold off set point four. We go to set point five, set point match point five. But also to win a game like this, you have... You, tipping doesn't win a game, so you have to take a big swing sometimes. And that one's an ace! Now two away from tying it up. Look how Centennial, this is as yeah, a coach. Centennial <laughs> one away from moving to the semis. Bumped up. Quick set. Uh -huh. And that'll do it. Centennial pulls it up. The Furious comeback, but they win it. Set number five, 15, 12. What a match. Wow. That was crazy. 
so fun that it was so close, too. Like, I'm sure yeah. Jessica Reinhardt did not want it to get that close, but... Yeah, for Ankeny fans, they're sitting there, oh, man, Centennial cruises to the first two, and then Ankeny wins that third, and you know, okay, we are still got one, and then they win the, the fourth, and now... And Reagan Hanfield, she did such a great job. She was serving aggressively, and like I said, she couldn't make an error there, or, you know, Ankeny Centennial wins off of that, so... So what we'll a great fight. see the handshakes. A couple of teams from Ankeny battling toe-to-toe, -to -toe and Ankeny comes out on top. They will move on to play the winner of the Waukee Northwest Cedar Falls match that's coming up. In addition to receiving their team trophy, each participating player will receive a medallion and commemorative volleyball provided by the Iowa Farm Bureau Proud title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Presenting awards from the IGHSAU are Gary Ross and Ben Van Wyke. Congratulations to head coach Liz Bethke and the Hawkettes from Ankeny on an outstanding 2023 volleyball season. And now, Cambria Lazier will advance her team onto the bracket to the semifinal round. Jaguar fans, your team advances to the semifinals and will play either Joaquin Northwest or Cedar Falls on Wednesday, November 1st at 10.25 a.m. on court number two. All right, a good match to start it out. Thanks, Miley, guys. Uh, what... <laughs> What a battle here, thanks to uh, Randy for running the controls here in the final. Centennial moves on to the semis here. I'm Dar Danielson. That's going to wrap it up with the Girls State Volleyball Tournament presented by the Iowa Farm Bureau.